Welcome to High Infidelity. The best cheating videos on YouTube. If you enjoy this content, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications. Now let's get into the video. I'm sitting out in front of AP House to confront him. Part 3. Update 4. Please be assured that everything remains cordial, respectful, and genial. Tension was high for the first week, but it has since subsided as we all adjust to our new normal. To be honest, it gives me hope that we can continue to settle things amicably because we've been generally respectful to each other throughout this. I know it's difficult to believe after everything she's put me through, but she's being fairly straightforward and honest about everything, and I've been steadfast in my resolve, with one notable exception, to press on. Second, it was a lot of fun putting up the Christmas decorations. The kids had a great time with it. We listened to Christmas music, watched Christmas movies, and didn't take ourselves too seriously. SDBXW also got in on the act. I couldn't technically stop her from assisting since she was still living in the home. While I hung lights outside, she oversaw the kids putting ornaments on the tree. When I walked in, we all drank hot chocolate and watched Christmas Vacation. I sat on one side of the children, and she sat on the other. We would have cuddled up on the couch together to watch the movie in previous years, but I wasn't about to do that this time. Third, the children's treatment is progressing nicely. The first meeting consisted primarily of paperwork and getting to know you activities. We got into it a little bit, but the kids were shy and unsure how it would all play out. I believe that having me and SDBXW in the room put them on edge a little. The second session appears to have gone much better. We began session hash two by discussing as a group, and then the therapist asked if we could walk out for a few moments. We waited outside the room while the therapist and the children spoke. After about 15 minutes, we walked back in, and the students shared what they had spoken about. They exhibited a great deal of pain and confusion, said that they did not want us to divorce, and stated that they did not want to live in separate households. Now comes the exciting part. SDBXW began to weep and said, I don't want that either. All I could think as I sat there open mount was, are you kidding me? Then you shouldn't have a round on me. I nearly exclaimed as I stopped myself from going any further, but I didn't do it. Then like a dummy, I added, I don't want that either, but it felt like I was simply echoing what she said. Then I asked the therapist if we could speak with her alone before we left. The therapist asked the kids to step out into the waiting room and close the door with five minutes left in the session. She then pounced on my wife. She claimed that she was being manipulative and painting me as the bad guy with her words and that she needed to stop if we were going to have a good co-parenting relationship in the future. She stated that if my wife truly did not want to divorce, she would have considered the consequences of her actions while having her affair. She pretty much said everything I wanted to say but couldn't. It was pretty amazing. That night, SDBXW apologized to me for what she had said in therapy and promised to think more about what she was saying and how her words would affect the kids before saying them. It was about the best I could hope for. Aside from that, work is going well and Christmas preparations are coming along nicely. Oh, and I had with my wife by accident. That's the aforementioned exception to my resolve. This is what occurred. Return to the night, we put up our Christmas decorations. It had been a wonderful day. We had all had a good time, watched movies, and enjoyed our time together. It was exactly as it had been before all of this nonsense happened. We put the kids to bed and sat down to watch It's a Wonderful Life, her favorite Christmas film. We've been drinking eggnog and brandy all evening, and between the warm feelings and the warm brandy, I didn't realize how much it had influenced my judgment. She leaned in and softly kissed my neck. I turned to look at her, and we just, yeah. We attacked it like a pair of adolescent boys. I wish I could say I wasn't thinking to myself, don't do this, but I was. I simply ignored my better judgment and did it anyway. I knew I wasn't in my right mind because it had been so long since she and I had been together. That being said, it was fantastic. We both had a great time. But as I laid there afterwards, I was disgusted with myself for doing it. I just, after all of this time, after all of her betrayals, after all of my good progress, I'm still angry with myself. And now I have to deal with all of the consequences. That night, 
I told her that nothing had changed between us and that I still wanted a divorce. I told her it couldn't happen again and that we couldn't go back to the way things were. She concurred. I mean, she said that she agreed, but who knows with her. I haven't had a chance to talk about it with my therapist or our marriage counselor with whom we are still meeting. And I need to go get an STD test because I'm not sure she got something from AP or not because I had a vasectomy some years ago, I don't have to worry about a surprise pregnancy, but the rest of it completely baffles me. I'm not sure how I could have been so idiotic as to let my defenses down. I'm sorry if what happened disappointed anyone here. I'm not perfect. I'm furious at myself. And it's not going to happen again. Final update. Let me begin by saying that my wife and I ultimately decided to persevere. Yes, I realize that will disappoint many of you. I know I suffered with sentiments of self-dissatisfaction throughout the most of last year. We're not back to 100% yet, and I doubt we ever will be, but things are looking up. It took roughly nine months of hard treatment, both individually and collectively, as well as therapy with our children, to get to this stage. We had to both be willing to forgive and move on. To be honest, I think it's a wonder that we've gotten this far. Here's how it all went down. I made it plain in my previous report that we would not be sleeping together again. We continued to attend to couples counseling, and she began to open up about what she was thinking and feeling, as well as what prompted her to rekindle her relationship with AP. It became clear to me at some point, probably in March, that something had changed in both of us. We weren't just going through the motions. We were really communicating with one another. She was terrified of becoming dissatisfied with her role as a wife and mother. She desired something that was lacking and attempted to obtain it outside of our marriage. Don't get me wrong, I wasn't falling for a ruse. I really feel she was lost and searching for whatever she was missing. Yes, she should have searched for it with me, but she didn't. That is something I have forgiven her for. I expressed my hurt and pain, as well as how shattered my trust had become. I was afraid of getting burned again. And to some extent, I still am, I'm aware that it's possible. In reality, anything is possible. But I've given up on my need to be in control and have placed my trust in her that she will never do something like this to me again. That's not all. Having a plan brings me a lot of inner calm. That's just who I am. I have a need to plan and work through details, and doing so provides me with comfort. I know what I would do if I ever began to doubt her loyalty or discovered evidence of her cheating again. That plan gives me strength and allows me to clear my mind of the pain. For months, all I could think about was her cheating and lying. I hardly think about it now. She hasn't talked to, contacted, or checked in with AP in over a year. Because I have access to her phone, laptop, and Facebook messages, I am aware of this, which she agreed to allow me. I was tempted to check her stuff every day for a while. It was difficult not to go through every single message and wonder who she was texting and why. My desire to check in on her waned over time. I always made sure to do it at random and without warning so that I could catch her if necessary. I haven't done that in probably two months and I doubt I'll do again unless something piques my interest. Again, therapy was extremely beneficial in this regard. I haven't spoken to AP or his wife since December of last year, when I last contacted her. To be honest, I'm fine with it. I can see that they are still married on Facebook, but I don't focus on it or check it much. I've set her profile to not appear in my newsfeed, and I believe the last time I checked it was 3-4 months ago. I don't give a what happens to them anymore. We separated ourselves from the group of friends with whom we were running and formed new friendships. I don't believe the old friendships were intentionally toxic, but those couples had different priorities that didn't align with who we wanted to be as a couple. They were very social and outgoing in a way that was fine with binge drinking, drug use, and bragging about money and social standing. They were kind individuals, but they weren't the type of people we wanted to spend our time with. Our new group of friends is fantastic. They're still social and outgoing but there's less drinking and drug use, more emphasis on family, and a more positive vibe all around. We spent New Year's Eve 2018 with our old group and awoke on January 1st hungover and worthless. We spent NYE with our new group this year and had a great time, 
but we got home with the kids early enough that we could enjoy ourselves and our kids on NYD. Our children are aware that we intend to remain together. We agreed to put the divorce procedures on hold for the summer June. July. It was supposed to be finished in March slash April, but we decided to push it back early. Going through our belongings and deciding who got what was extremely difficult and I honestly believe it contributed to both her willingness to open up and make things work and my willingness to give it another shot. We told the kids that we were not going to divorce, that sometimes mommies and daddies need to work through difficult situations, and that we would continue to try to work through this. In August, she returned to our bedroom, and I removed the lock. Life isn't perfect, but it's getting better, and it's getting better by the day. She apologized to me on Christmas for all she had put me through and promised to work hard every day to re-establish my trust and affection. I adore her, probably more than ever. I can see how couples can go through something like this. We've planned a family vacation together this spring during the kids' spring break, and I think we're all looking forward to it. We continue to see our couple's therapist on a weekly basis, and we both continue to see individual therapists on a regular, but not weekly, basis outside of our couple's sessions. Our marriage counselor expressed her admiration for how we handled the situation and how we continue to work to heal the in our marriage. It wasn't easy for a long time, but it's much easier today. I want to be as specific as possible about what we did to heal. I realize the remainder of this article is a little hazy, but I want to be clear on what we did to make it work. Perhaps this will be useful to someone else. I'm not an expert. This is just what worked for us. Individual and couples counseling is available on both sides. Therapy helped me recognize my flaws as a man, a husband, and a father. It helped me discover clarity and tranquility inside myself, as well as reclaim the confidence I had lost when my wife cheated on me. Her individual treatment assisted her in identifying and dealing with her own flaws as a wife and mother. It helped her determine if she really want reconciliation or whether she preferred to go her own way. When she decided she wanted to reconcile, our couples counseling helped us figure out how to get there and what our lives would be like thereafter. We both agreed to work toward that common goal. We fully committed and worked hard outside of therapy to rebuild our relationship. This includes radical candor. I told her when I was feeling something. She informed me when she was experiencing something. We didn't keep our sentiments to ourselves. We expressed them, and when she was telling me anything, I pushed all of my distractions aside and actually listened to her. She was kind enough to do the same for me. Check-ins happen every day. We would sit down every night once the kids were in bed and check-in with each other. How did we spend our day? What did we have planned for the following day? What did we think of each other? These chats were challenging at first, but they quickly became second nature. I now look forward to our nightly check-ins because I know they have had a huge beneficial influence on our relationship. They're asking each other questions. It was almost as if we had gone back in time to when we first began dating. We've been together for a long time and we're not the same individuals we were when we first began dating. Individuals change. The issue is whether the people we are now are still capable of being in a good marriage. I noticed an internet list of questions ranging from what is your favorite color to what would you do if one of your parents died right now. We went through the list one by one. Then we discovered another list. And here's another. It's been interesting rediscovering who she is. Service acts. I'm not very religious, but we came across a Christian-based handbook on rebuilding a marriage after infidelity that emphasized acts of service for your spouse. This varied from the modest, writing them a letter, executing a duty for which they were accountable, sending a message in the middle of the day, to the lavish, date night alone, buying a thoughtful gift, taking a weekend. Away together. Again, the little things started to mount up, restoring my faith in her and my love for her. Simple gestures, like her taking out the garbage for me while I was working late one night, meant a lot. Stop ruminating on it. This was difficult for me. I had to consciously choose not to think about things that might lead me down a bad path. This was also really motivating since it allowed me to concentrate my attention and energy on other things. Whenever I felt myself becoming engrossed in it, I'd do anything to keep my mind off of it. Work out or go for a run, 
watch something hilarious on TV, do something diverting with the kids. I eventually stopped thinking about it on a daily basis, and as I previously said, as time passed, I thought about it less and less. Please don't misinterpret this as me preaching. I'm not. Some individuals, in my opinion, should not be together. I honestly thought that about us until about halfway through last year. Some folks are capable of making it work. Others most obviously should not. From the outside, I can't assess your circumstance any better than you can judge mine. But for the time being, I am certain that we will be together for the long haul. Something more, I can't go in and check this account on a daily basis since it brings up old, awful memories of what transpired between us. I intend to publish this, then check in again in a few days, and then probably leave the account alone in the future. I don't want to erase it in case someone else finds it useful, but I can't keep exposing myself to all of this if I want to continue working with her. I hope this makes sense.